Kate Mila Mila Falcha Karja, and welcome to this week's episode of Up My Own Hall podcast. It's Mr. Seamus O'Cruley, and I am your host. Um, please remember to like this podcast, share this podcast, and recommend this podcast to a friend. God of Mila Margaret. Okay, so uh, welcome, Emma. Uh, thank you so much for thank coming you. on. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. Not a bother. Um, we're just getting our technical difficulties out of the way here, the two of us. We are. We are. <laughs> Technology good. is not always a friend. No, definitely not for no. me and you. No. Um, unreal. So thank you so much again for coming on. And if you just no want problem. to introduce yourself and what you do or whatever. Sure. So um, my name is Emma O'Sullivan. I am from Cork. Um, I'm from Ballinlock in Cork. And yeah, I think... I suppose what I do really, I'm a very creative person. So um, I went to college for design and tailoring. So I actually make clothes, more kind of like costume-ish type. Mm. Um, I've always grown up just loving fashion. Um, so yeah, I suppose I, I wanted to do that. Um, but recently my life has taken me down more of a different journey and a different path. Um, and hopefully I'm thinking of going into something to do with advocating for mental health and um, mm -hmm. speaking. So, yeah, just helping other people, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Unreal. Um, well, and um, so are you in music as well or was that? No, I'm not. No, no actually. No, oh, I, I did a bit of singing. <clears throat> I have to admit I did some singing, but yeah. um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not. No, more kind of in the shower, I'd say. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I know I just yeah. saw on your Instagram, it was voice works or something, but is that a different... Yeah, so I actually do. It's, it's such a random thing over lockdown. Um, I got an opportunity to do voiceover work. Okay. So I actually ended up doing voiceover work for um, a couple of different companies, which was such a random, but also really cool thing to do um, oh, right. over lockdown. Yeah. Cool. And was that for like cartoons and stuff? Or? No, it was more for, do, so do you know, like energy companies and, oh, yes. you know, for like ads and stuff like that. Um, so it was very interesting. I've never yeah. done anything like that before, but very, very interesting. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I just saw that. So I just presumed, but okay, cool. Yeah. And, and the reason how I kind of saw your, your social media and stuff was actually through a, a mutual friend in, in Brainy. So I Brainy, oh wow! I, I put the two and two yeah, together. Yeah, so I just thought you were singing, didn't? When I saw the voice works, but yeah, Brian is <clears> great. <throat> Brian is yeah, really so just great. such a beautiful voice. She yeah. is oh, unreal, so good. Yeah. Amazing. No, oh, that's okay, and uh, gee, that's very interesting work, really, because I, I'm actually yeah, I went for an audition over here. <laughs> um, I've Stop. never, yeah, I've never done any acting or anything like that before, but I only well. did it there last week for the crack. See how I got yeah. on, and. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it's funny that you're kind of you were doing the same thing in ads and stuff like that. So. Yeah, yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's very interesting when you don't do it. You've never done anything like it, and yeah. you do it, and you're like, okay, if that was a good experience. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. It's quite, and yeah, and it's, everything is yeah, move on. The, yeah, um, the, yeah, it's because I was I was I had I had to wait a, an imaginary table in front, just me and a guy in a room. Yeah, what? yeah. I, he was like, let's improvise. And I was like, okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. I would just <laughs> run out of the room, I think. I wouldn't be able yeah. now for that at all. Oh, well, there was gosh. a time in my life I was like that too. And, um, but I don't know what, there's just like the last five or six years, I'd say, maybe a bit more even, I've just had this kind of a, a click in the brain, you know, of, um, no, yeah. with, with ups and downs. Obviously, I went back kind of um, into a, a state of, of not being that person either, like being free to do yeah. whatever I want, you know, and kind of very like um, affected by um, external influences. Yeah. Um, and I was back, I was drinking and stuff, so I, I went back mm -hmm. to drinking, and now I'm off yeah. again. And when I, when I don't drink or substance abuse, I just yeah. uh, my I just open up my whole. I just don't care in a good way. That's the know? thing. Yeah. yeah, and that's such a, a similar thing to what's happened to me the last couple of months. Um. I'd normally be a very like quiet, introverted, very, very private person. Um, but going through, we can get into it in the minute, I suppose, but going through what I've been going through, something, as you said, in my brain kind of switched where I really just didn't care anymore about what people think or people's views of me, you know, my story, what I'm doing. 
and it kind of turned into more of like this is it's bigger than just me yeah um you know and I'm seeing so many other young people struggle that it's become such a passion of mine to to help people hopefully while I'm waiting for treatment mm. um and and it's given me you know a reason to wake up in the morning and to mm. just carry on because I know like I can I can help other people and hopefully do that when I'm better you know yeah 100 percent. that's yeah, that's fine that, and that's I call it the click that it's just there's the just click. a click yeah it's just it's yeah. just a click happens and like I remember when I first gave up the drink and uh, substance abuses as well it was 2016 I think and um like it's very hard obviously and you have to fucking oh, like, I can the, imagine the the the, 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 the 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 temptations and the whatever else and, yeah but I just said it like I, it was just that click and then as as time progressed I could see how much I was helping others as well you know it was yes like and and that that turns from like the pain of doing it at the start and like trying to find a new way of life and trying to find all these yes. new avenues to help me grow and help me and, and stabilize me really because yeah. my, my crutch be it the drink or the substance abuse was gone so I needed something new yeah. so I had to create new pathways and blah 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 and and but what as with the pain of doing all that and getting through it and kind of getting to another point of helping others it went from being a pain to being a passion you know that kind of way. exactly and and that's the way it is for me at the moment as well and I suppose that's why I'm I'm kind of sharing my story more on social mm. media because um, I'm getting so many messages from people that I don't even know saying they're going through the same struggles with the mental health system here in Ireland and yeah. just you know I know that I won't be able to change the system in the grand scheme of things mm -hmm. but I think if we if we create these small communities um, of change that it can do some good you know yeah it's like um, a rip, yeah. rip, ripple effect sorry to cut across you definitely but, no not at all but it's, it's the ripple effect is what is what i've heard of being called before you know it's just like yeah. one person makes a change it breaks the cycle and that ripple will just expand out to others you know exactly you were saying that you were struggling with addiction um mm -hmm. and i know there is uh like groups like 12 step programs mm -hmm. for addiction um and in a way like eating disorders and OCD um it's nearly like an addiction as well you know mm. I uh, I don't know the exact struggles of a person going through a, an addiction but I feel an, an eating I, yeah. disorder would be definitely up there I'm not sure with OCD definitely. but I have yeah. seen people with eating disorders I've spoke to people that have also had other disorders with it yeah. and they said that it's the same same thing it's just the, the same a, thing mm -hmm. and it's it's interesting how <laughs> you know uh, I've heard of programs, you know, 12 step programs um, and there's a lot of support around that. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of makes me think and wonder like what we can do for people in our community with different mental health issues, like how we can apply maybe a 12 step program group mm -hmm. or other supports, you know, yeah. from people who are going through it. Because I've noticed that, you know, I, I go to appointments and it's just like you know they're just they have a title you know they have mm -hmm. a doctor or a, a psychologist or a psychiatrist but I think it's nearly like it's a lack of actual knowledge you yeah, know yeah the life experience and, of it yeah exactly mm -hmm. and so you know just wondering if we had these groups I think it would make some difference, you know, 100%, because... hundred percent, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, it's I just believe a... I believe there's a savage power in people, regardless of, yes. like, just just to be vulnerable with one another and to put yourself into a space where you're admitting a lot of your faults. Well, to you exactly. are your faults, you know? Yeah. And 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 you're, like, even in... with So, like, in AA, that's what I, I would be... A, I'm a member of AA. Um, yeah. And the, I, I actually have never gone through the steps fully uh, in with a sponsor. I, I've never had a sponsor. Yeah. I, I'm kind of looking into it here. It's, mm -hmm. Again, it's very kind of vulnerable. And I'm like, oh, who and do that's I the ask? Thing. Yeah, yeah. But once I break that down, I know it's going to be extremely good for me, you know? So, yeah. Um, but it, like even in that, like you have to, you have to you admit what's going on with you, you know? And then you mm -hmm. have to accept that you need help 
Do you know, these are yes. all the things that are that that are hard to do. Um, they are, yeah. You know, and then you have to make a list of people of like things that you that you kind of make amends for in the past, and you know, there's a lot which would be kind Definitely. of different, but similar. yeah, yeah, but different but similar. And I mm. think the the major thing for me over the last uh, year or so, or the last couple of months, has been that admitting to needing help. Mm-hmm. Um, because yeah. for years, I suppose I have been getting some sort of help but like majorly masking how deeply I was struggling you know and how dark it was and the frustrating thing for me coming out of that was admitting that I needed help but it was at a crisis stage where when I went to seek that help I unfortunately figured out actually in Ireland we don't have the proper quality help you know yeah. um you know there's so many people and I've been through this myself you know you're told to go to the a e if you feel unsafe or you're told to go to a crisis place if you feel unsafe but you're turned away just with another medication mm-hmm. um and so I think the point of asking for for help is really finding the right help for yourself and kind of deciding, okay, this is what I need. Um, Because, yeah, I think we just... one tablet fixes all either, you know? Exactly. We're all so different. Yeah, and the system is just kind of one size fits all. Um, Mm. So I think it's just really important to kind of... And that's what's been amazing for me the last couple of months to find my voice and find that I can actually advocate for myself. Mm. Um, and be on the same level with um, a practitioner or a doctor like where I'm not a lesser human you know mm. I don't need to be treated any lesser than I yeah. can I can speak up for myself you know yeah 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 so like just to give you a brief like kind of synopsis of my life and mental health say like so yeah. I, I lost my mother at 11 years of age to suicide oh my gosh yeah. I'm so she, sorry thank you um, she she was just very, very hurt. You know, she had a lot of stuff that happened in her life before she yeah. even met my dad and before she ever had kids or whatever. And then as life goes on, having kids isn't easy and whatever. Yeah. So there was two older siblings than me, then my younger sister. And uh, and then uh, the, the Big Bang, I call it, because it was just like everything was just blown up out of proportion and everything was just gone mad, you know. And yeah. so that's that's mental. And, and I remember my mother being um, put into a, a mental institute in the gf in in the cuh years ago really yeah yeah wow wow. Uh, i must have been about seven or eight i'd say and they're only the only thing that did no she probably she did a bit of counseling in there as well i can't fully remember the the extent of it now so i don't want to be calling the system like yeah yeah so i can't recall the system as uh, as someone who would who were were older at the time but um Mm -hmm. i do remember that, that the most kind of advised thing for her was to attend AA, you know, to, to wow. attend AA, yeah. attend AA. With, and that's not what AA is for, you know, AA is for stop yeah. drinking, that's it. That's the know? thing. Yeah. yeah, and there was so much more that was, that would, that went on for her, like there was so much more she needed to talk about, so, so much, much more she needed more. to work on, and that yeah. was the system back then, and I tell you, there was, there was, it's not too long ago, someone close to me, they went through a very similar thing yeah. in their lives, and they, they they went into psychosis a, a lot, um, yeah. they, and it was coming from a, it was coming from a, like a stress that was going on inside them yeah. that would actually she it would get so bad they'd lose the the, the reality yeah. really. Um, yes, yeah. And the system, I sat down with a with a with a with the with the with the doctor, the nurse, and the yeah. the kind of the, the geez, I can't think of his name now. He's he's like the head of, he's the head of them inside in Saint Michael's there in the Mercy. Yeah, and he literally taught me it's a behavioral thing that she she needs to cop on. In other words, like you know. And I tell yeah. you that is so so true to what I've been going through. Like I've gotten so many of these comments, like just crazy. You know, I've been offered, I've been begging for help. You know, like inpatient help because I I severely struggle with OCD, and mm. um, the most that I'm being offered is a 48 hour crisis admission which would just yeah. be like you know basically it's like throwing you into a room you have no phone no nothing you're just kind of there just on a um, bed that's it 
basically yeah mm. yeah with no contact with anyone just for 48 hours and then you go back into the community they put people in prison um, for, for that's isolation yeah. you know isolation is very bad for the nervous system exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. That's and and that's the only thing so i suppose that's why you know going through all these processes that's why i've started the the gofundme to try you know it was my literally my last option that i thought i would ever do mm. but just to try and get the right help yeah yeah well done well done and um i'll put a link in the in the in the description of this as well for that gofundme as well you know? oh thank you uh, thank yeah, you so no, much. But, just so people know but if you want to do you kind of want to just start your story? Like, do you want to go back to maybe school? How that was sure. for you? And uh, we'll progress from there. Is that right? Yeah, sure. So um, I went to a lovely little primary school um, in Ballinlock in Cork. So it was very much, you know, like a little lovely environment. It was a little girls' school. Um, really, really nice. You know, I, could, I couldn't say anything bad about it. Mm. Um. I was an extremely quiet child, I suppose, after my parents separated, I kind of went from being like a bubbly kind of, you know, just really outgoing kid to being just really, really quiet in the corner and kind of secluded, I suppose. Mm. Um, And I think that carried on quite a lot of my life. I went into secondary school then. um, and can I just ask what age you yeah. were when 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 your parents separated? What, what class yeah, were you so in? I was I was I was actually only about five or six. Mm, yeah. yeah, but I still have like these flashes of memories of you know family together of things that yeah yeah of things of things that went on. Mm-hmm. Um, funnily enough, I don't actually remember my childhood like much. Yeah. Um. And I, I maybe I, I, maybe I that's I don't want to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think that's exactly it. Yeah, uh, yeah. There was a lot of like my school years. I really had to go back into my memories to even for this podcast to start off. Yeah, I really had to kind of dig deep into it and try find the the actual progression of my life because it's it's like I just that's I, the thing. People say to me, Jimmy, you're like a fellow who's after living ten lives, you know, <laughs> because I yeah. kind of have in sections. It's weird, but yeah. No, that's, that's the thing. Yeah, like I look back and. I, I just can't think of and maybe that's just the mind state that I'm in now but I can't think of happy childhood memories you know and I suppose that really affected me going then into secondary school um, and I started to develop uh, anorexia so an eating disorder um, and I suppose it actually looking back started very early around like 10 or 11 like I would remember looking at my legs and being disgusted by them and just having these thoughts and I think it just progressed really slowly into kind of restricting food Mm -hmm. kind of doing these habits over a couple of years um and then at that point my do do you know do do you know when that would have started or how would have like was it an external thing you think or internal just the thing that happened yeah looking back I think it was a way for me to kind of like picking a part of my brain now mm. I think it was a way for me to control what was going around me like I felt so unsafe with everything around me that I found a way to to I felt safe in anorexia like I felt safe that it was it was something I could control yeah. and it was always there you know what I mean Mm-hmm. in a in a weird in a weird really weird way um no, yeah it's not it's not that weird at, at all after it's uh yeah it kind of makes sense because you a lot of stuff you didn't have control over were hurting yeah, you yeah. Know? like the loss of That's or the, the, the breakup of your family and you know and so yeah. you would if the one thing that you could control then you you kind of did it in the wrong way unfortunately but you know exactly yeah and i suppose you know from there then i was referred to um to CAM, so it's a child and adolescent mental health. Um, and yeah, that was, I, I don't know if you've heard anything about that specific thing. There's been a lot of controversy around that. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, it was an extremely hard time. You know, I really feel like uh, my treatment there was very mismanaged and 
unfortunately they let me get so sick to the point where I was actually admitted into um an inpatient adolescent psychiatric ward um at about 17 for six months um I I got so like I got so so sick that my my spine was bruised I had to have ECGs every day um bloods every day my blood pressure was so low I I couldn't I wasn't allowed to walk you know um sorry to hear that yeah no it's fine uh I, I suppose I've talked about it so much to to family members and stuff it's just the pain of it has gone out mm. of me Good. um but you know it was an extremely difficult time I suppose I feel like I've lost a lot of my life and teenage years to to that um so I was in and out of school sick quite a lot you know mm-hmm. um and around the around the cam situation, you know, I, I again, I really hope we can kind of overturn that for kids because I'm seeing article after article of like really young kids, you know, really, really needing help and just being turned away or not given proper treatment. Um, and it's just so sad you know yeah, and yeah. yeah it's just I've it breaks it my heart yeah i've seen it with someone close to me and i've seen it with a young fella years ago i was at his funeral and he was only 15 and he it was you know a suicide you know and uh it was yeah. Very, uh, yeah it nearly happened very close to me and i've seen a lot of other people around and that are going through the same thing that are going through that system and they just haven't a fucking clue what they're doing you know they, they don't have a clue like mm. i i have been coming out of appointments feeling literally hopeless like this is the end for me you know going in there feeling like really distressed but coming out feeling absolutely like Mm -hmm. though there's no hope like why am I even here you know yeah yeah yeah. um you know there it's just been like shocking to look back on and I really don't want anyone going through this anymore and I just feel like there needs to be some sort of a, a complete just renovation of the whole system you know yeah um i don't know how that would happen i don't know but well, it's, it's a um, lot of funding yeah. f- fund the health service funding. You know I mean? and 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 divide it properly like there's studies being done all over the world to increase the the knowledge and the and the and and the know-how about these certain topics but there's in ireland the money goes to uh, the top dogs and not yeah. doesn't trickle down, you know, to, to the, the likes exactly. of CAMS now, which is, would, would be, yeah. it's kind of a branch off of the HSE or whatever. So Definitely, it, yeah. Like, it's the people that work there, it's it's kind of not their fault. Do you know what I mean? Like, yes. I, don't know yeah. what, I don't know what way it is. It, it's a, it's a, it's a, what do you say? It's a, I suppose it's what they learn. Yeah. yeah. Do you know that kind of way? It's the system. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is, is that fault. Definitely. Not the people, For sure. You know? Definitely. Um, but yeah, there, there, there needs to be more research and more and more uh, work really going to it, like, you know, and, yeah. it, and that, that's allowed to happen or like that, that can happen. I mean, you know? definitely. And I mean, there's always, you know, and I think there is nothing wrong with like admitting, OK, we've done something wrong here. You know, we've we're not doing the right yeah. thing and we want to we want to change. Like, I mean, if I, I think everyone would be just fine with that if, if that happened you yeah, know yeah 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 um, okay. yeah just like admit it and let's move on and let's create a better system for, for like the generation coming you know mm, yeah 100 percent because it's um like i remember growing up I, like I, I don't think there was any of that really you know so like yeah. the fact that it's there and then there's this there's this thing that older generations like my say my dad's age or whatever like would have had say 50s, 60s, it's like, ah, should we, we know nothing. We, ah, should we wouldn't know. Yeah. That's, that's all new. And I, exactly. I, don't, I, I don't stand for that kind of crack, you know, because yeah. I'm like, mm-hmm. th- there is loads you can do. There's other countries that that delve into this, deep dive into oh, this. for sure. You know, and yeah. with studies and, you know, they've whole, they've masters and they've theses on it. And, you know, there's like, so it's like, absolutely use their amazing. work. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. I, I have even been ringing around to a couple of different countries actually wanting and and trying to find help where wherever I could you know and there there is so many well unfortunately for OCD there's there's not that many specific programs but 
even in Norway, there, there is a program for OCD, a four day intensive program, and it's free for their citizens, you know, mm -hmm. and it's really well researched. It's, yeah. it's, it's brand new. Um, and, you know, even, even in just talking to friends from Poland, from Spain, mm -hmm. like the you know, healthcare, yeah, is just so, so different. Like you can just go to a hospital and, and get help if you need it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and it's, and it's all the different types of help that are that are there and available too. You know, it's uh, definitely yeah. Like the, the the country is a joke at the moment with the way it's yeah. been done. Like, and it is, and I I don't like to be spreading bad news or spreading, but it, you have oh, to yeah. take it for what it is. You know what I mean? Definitely. It's a fucking yeah. it's a disgrace. Like it, and it has oh, been yeah. for generations at this point. You know, it I seen it. Yeah, I seen it with my mother, mm -hmm. and I seen it with a, a young fella only a couple of years ago, and um. They went, they went through the same thing. They both went for help. It wasn't there. And they thought there was no other option only to leave this world. And that's, that's, and, and this that's is a the pretty thing. grim place to be, you know? Yeah. And to be honest with you, I have been in, in that place. And I literally woke up one morning and I think it was anger in me that I was like, I'm not, I, I'm not giving up. Like, I, yeah. there has to be another way. And unfortunately, like, the, the only other way is... Uh, is private and it's mm. extremely expensive you know yeah. i'm still i'm i'm waiting and waiting for you know my gofundme is still kind of slow we're doing events mm. but it's 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 hard you know it's hard to try and raise that money um and you shouldn't have to like if you're sick yeah. and if you're going through something you shouldn't have to throw an event or yeah. or even just try anything you know what yeah, i mean it's yeah, very yeah very difficult yeah like you see like but even just with, like to take it back to funding and stuff since i think there's something like since mihan martin got in with into the government there's been something like i don't know like eight pay raises for politicians in the doll you know and some 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 tds have actually put their raises into the charity box because they're like we don't need it but the, yeah and then the, and then there's people like me and you that like i've been in the desk like i've never I've I've gone to a psych psychologist and I've gone to counselling for years. I'm still yeah. go going to counselling at the moment, and mm -hmm. I do AA as well. I say, but like yeah. where I am now, like that's why this podcast is called up up my own hole because yeah. if I seen any fella doing this before, I was in such a bad place that I actually would have said that he was up his own hole. Well, yeah. he, fella, he thinks he knows everything. He thinks he's you know exactly. Yeah, and that's and that's a point of view that I had and that people still have in Ireland. You know. So, definitely there's a huge stigma yeah oh massive massive as, as, about mental health about even suicide like there, it was only yeah. recently there, there was priests wouldn't bless your body so you couldn't go into the church you would have the whole procession of your funeral rosary and whatever would have to be I done didn't in know that. yeah yeah because it's a, it's actually wow. a mortal sin to take your oh, own wow. life yeah yeah so oh my god you know, i didn't so, even know that now yeah wow. like we had a priest at my mother's funeral that wouldn't allow us play music in the church and it was literally because of the way she died, you know, so which was incredible. Oh, like. my God, that that is actually disgraceful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh so my God. there's um, and there's stigma around that, there's stigma around mental health. And then there's people that suffer from mental health that don't even know yeah. they're suffering from mental health. And they exactly. just don't want to hear it. You know, no, no it's yeah. I think there was a, a study recently that in Ireland, um, the 41 percent of the population have um mental health issues and that's only the people that have come forward you know yeah that's the um, thing. yeah and i think there's you know we all have mental health you know mm, we course. all have to look after our mental health but i think there's a big thing around like mental health and having a mental illness you yes, know yes like we you know just having that stigma around because ocd for me is really it, it's an illness like it's something I can't mm -hmm. control it's something that like just talking therapy is doing nothing for me now I can't get any relief from it um mm -hmm. it's just a constant it, it's a constant constant fear I'm, I'm living in you know yeah um and just I suppose even like thinking back if we were taught mindfulness or mm -hmm. meditation or something in school yeah. we could maybe change having you know mental health change or prevent it becoming a mental illness you know yeah 100%. like we're taught how to prevent i don't know diabetes or 
different health problems, yeah. you know. The food pyramid could be a mental health pyramid. In, exactly. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and it's but and as you said, like this, it's the cost of the private side of things then as well, you know, that is just it's, it's insane. ridiculous. You know? It's absolutely insane. I mean, yeah. I I think of it sometimes what I'm trying to do and I just, it still, it still shocks me mm. that I have to raise this amount of money to get help because yeah. I've what, what is the you amount know, if you don't mind me asking yeah so the the optimal amount of money I'm trying to raise is 60,000 mm -hmm. and that would be for a good amount of treatment you know mm. is, um, that, is that in-house treatment like as in you would be uh, like yeah. In, uh, yeah residential uh, yeah it would be it'll be up in Dublin actually okay um, and what's the name of that place it's called St. Patrick's okay in Dublin so they have um an OCD program there Okay. which nowhere really in Ireland has. Um, and I suppose knowing that is that's what I need. It's mm. just so hard waiting and wait. Like I've tried to up in that hospital. Um, a lot of people don't know this because they're not told, but we did a lot of research. The HSE can actually fund 10% of patients that go in there. Mm. um but they again like I've asked so so many times and it's it's not an option like flat out refuse to even apply for funding Jeez. um and and I've talked to a lot of people in the same position that they've been just begging their teams to apply for funding for them and they're like nope like I I was told like it would just never ever happen I would have to be on tried every single medication and some of these medications are like the old school medications mm. so they have like severe side effects rather than you Sweet know i'm on medication Christ. now but you know there, there are some side effects to it but at least it's newer you know yeah, yeah there's kind of a bit more research and stuff but i would have to be on those medications tried mm. out all of them you know done the whole thing in cuh which they have no I've asked them straight out, do they have treatments for OCD? And they just say, no, you just be in a room, you know. So then you're um, under the umbrella of mental illness, regardless of what yes. it is or where it's yeah. going. It's just like you're yes. in there at the same room as someone who's think they're two different people or whatever, you know. And yeah, that's... exactly. So they, there's no, um, you know, if, if it was me and that funding was, if I was the doctor and I knew that funding was available, I would be like, yeah, let's try and, apply for it at least yeah, if they yeah. say no they say no mm. but um no they're just refusing people oh, so, so they, they um, couldn't even fill out a farm and send it away no. for you oh wow no. i thought it was and, that it was that you were going that far at least like i just literally yep. i was like yep. common knowledge would say that a doctor exactly. would say that oh, wow no Jesus they Christ. wouldn't they they wouldn't even apply and i have spoken to so many other people and it's like a miracle that you would get this funding you know um and it's the, just the gap between the private and the the public mental health system is just insane you know that there's yeah. no middle ground and no treatment mm -hmm. um yeah it's, yeah, it's crazy it's, it's ridiculous jesus christ that's mad and um and it, can you describe you know in, in in the best way you can what 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 is ocd and how does it affect you yeah yeah so um ocd is obsessive compulsive disorder um, and for me, it's in a way it's kind of stemmed from my eating disorder um, An eating disorder can kind of, it can morph into a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And, um, for me, it's been, been OCD. So it's a fear of contamination. Um, but it's gotten so severe that, you know, I would have to sanitize my utensils at home, um, you know, it, it's gotten to the point where I was spraying my hands and my body with like Dettol sprays um, just washing all the time. Just uh, so it's I can explain it like hyper visualization. Mm. How would I say it? Hyper hyper awareness. So, you know, I couldn't get on a bus because I can literally spot like the tiniest bit of dirt or dust or oh, yeah. or something like that and I just feel like I I cannot be clean um yeah. like going I can't 
go and stay like in an Airbnb or something because I'm just convinced I'll get bed bugs you know yeah, I'm just yeah. like this is going to happen oh. um it's it makes your life so so small mm. and you're worried about your next step instead of just being literally. able to live a normal life yeah like I, I haven't felt freedom in so long like even food I eat I'm afraid I'm going to get something from the food you know so mm. again that affects my eating I lose weight and it's like a full circle and um, a lot of times at OCD people think it's oh this person just like washes their hands a lot or uh you know they just open and close the door but you know there's actually so many different subtypes of OCD mm -hmm. like um there's a thing called somatic OCD um which I experience a lot as well which is terrifying it's um you're feeling physical feelings but there's actually nothing there so for me I would feel crawling and um, like I would be convinced it was like Something stuff crawling, crawling yeah. on me yeah. um and you know that would keep me awake all night and oh. you know just it can get really um really deep and mm. then you get bodily reactions to that you know yeah so those can and also with OCD comes intrusive thoughts, which are the hardest thing for me. Um, so they're like, they're thoughts that are just keep coming in, but you can't get reassurance for them. Mm. So if I touched uh, a table yeah. and I thought there was dirt on it and I washed my hands and I was still terrified and I was convinced I was going to get something, um, that would play on my mind so so much but I could never get reassurance from it so it would just end up in a breakdown um so just kind of examples like that it's it's a very complex mm. very very oh, complex mix. thing yeah. yeah yeah see like it, for, for, as you said like people be like oh you wash your hands twice a week get over it yeah thing to know yeah. and it's and I, 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 I can sense that from even yeah. how you're trying to explain it because there's mm -hmm. a little yeah. like you i can hear the external influences in your ear as you're explaining oh that, yeah that makes sense people you know so many people are like oh my god i'm so ocd about this you know yeah yes I'm so yeah. ocd about this yeah. uh and then you know i don't i don't take offense to it at all but it's just funny to hear because i'm like if you actually knew <laughs> yeah, what living yeah. with ocd is like it's mm. so different that it's it's not like this cute thing that's like you know i yeah. need have all my pens in a row yeah like yeah you can yeah. go to uh, people have ocd about religion about their relationships about hurting they think they're going to hurt other people you know like it's there's so many subsets of it mm -hmm. um so yeah i've done i've done a lot of research i suppose trying to trying to educate myself yeah. about it um but it's a it's a terrifying thing and it's something that there is not a lot of treatment for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. So sorry for that, love. The, um, yeah. Like, ex, I can't imagine it really. Like you know, like, even like there's arachnophobia of spiders or whatever you know. And then yeah, mm -hmm. you know, it's like having that. And then like, like if you can feel say stuff crawling or whatever, like exactly. I, I can get that some days because I have it. Yeah. I wouldn't say have arachnophobia, no, but I have a little fear of creepy crawlies or whatever, you know. Yeah. So I yeah. feel them and I'd be just like, do I hit myself or you feel a you can feel it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But like, to have that thing. consistently with 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 as you said, no reassurance. Um, yeah. I can imagine it. God, Jesus Christ. It, yeah. it turns into like for me, it turned into like really bad health anxiety as well. Mm. So you know running to the doctor just being convinced I have something or you know like yeah. and then they do the tests and there's nothing there and um speaking to other people recently who have similar symptoms to me um it's kind of been a bit relieving because I'm like okay there's somebody else yeah, that's yeah, done yeah, this yeah. been through the same thing but yeah um it's something so so hidden and I think if you if you saw me walking down the street or just hear me you mm. wouldn't think it like you wouldn't you wouldn't yeah. know but I've been masking it for so long I suppose mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so I just want to say on this like if whoever's listening to this podcast in uh, going forward and if you are facing any of these 
similar or anything similar I'd, I'd say to reach out really um, definitely yeah reach out to emma and reach out yeah. and and like that if like even even if you came to a place where you could organize a little meeting for everyone just to get together and have exactly. a cup of tea or fucking yeah. just sit down in wherever in the park or this in is the, the park, thing you know and just Anywhere. everyone come together yeah yeah, yeah. and there's a great like, power I'm in so, it. definitely i'm so open to talking to people and meeting people and you know like i've had just like humans are actually amazing because I've had so many people getting in contact with me, like sending me information about, you know, different hospitals abroad, what I need for it, what forms you would need, just spending a lot of their time trying to help me that don't even know me, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I think there there is power in, in community. 100%. Um, yeah. um, so... This is a plug for my Patreon. Um, Patreon.com forward slash up your own hall. If you could afford the price of a pint or a cup of coffee once a month, I'd be very greatly appreciated. Um, might be able to get my own equipment, get my own set, my own setup. And um, yeah, if you can afford it, be greatly appreciated. If you can't, don't worry about it. Go to Mila Mila Mahagut. So, yeah, I suppose it's just been yeah. horrific to have to even get to a point of of having to start something yeah. like this and go public with my story, you know? Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, yeah. You shouldn't have to, like, you know? and You shouldn't have to, no. I had Roisin on here a couple of weeks ago and um, we were speaking about the Irish language and the Irish, I don't know, and what it does for our psyche not to be speaking it or whatever. And she, yeah. and she, she had a great thing and put it's in my head since... and. It's like when you speak with a colonial tongue, with so with the English language, you you see with the colonial eyes. So you you see mm. a massive divide in people. And the Irish people are a great people. We are a great people. Yes. We have a massive community. Before the English ever came over, it was about community yes. spirit. It was about helping one another. It was a village yep. would raise a as, raise a child, and it, it's been it, it just that comment that she said about that. It was like like it. I, I, I feel that in Ireland we need to go back in order to go forward. So. If you get me, I think you know, so. We have to knock yeah. knock on the head a lot of this fucking racing for the top, racing for the capitalism, racing yeah. for money, 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 and come back yeah. to helping one another because we all You're face so it. Right. And by we all like, do, you know. And like you were scared for long enough to even to come out and say this yeah. to, in the public. And if 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 we were just a bit more open as a people, you would have yeah. been a lot more open to saying it to your neighbor saying it to a friend exactly. or saying it to a teacher you know and it's um yeah yeah big changes need to happen big time like you big know, changes and, like mm. even you know what like I know everyone around me now knows now and you know my neighborhood and everything and sometimes walking out I still get that fear of oh they're seeing me and they like they think I'm like I, I get this thought like oh they think I'm pretending or so do you know yes, what I mean like I, 100%. like I just I like that I get I get scared of that and then I think like why am I thinking like this they're not living my life they don't they don't know me like you know yeah yeah but yeah this, yeah that's just the external just, stuff again you know yeah it's just a massive a massive thing I suppose yeah You'll be, afraid to, you'll be afraid to laugh just in case someone saw you that and she look but, at her laugh. she's is, fucking flying it she's grand she's <laughs> laughing yeah <laughs> she's you know she's what's wrong with her like yeah 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 it's full of shit mm. there's about three or four kind of um places i go to eat because i feel comfortable eating there um i don't i don't really eat at home because i don't feel comfortable using the utensils and okay it's just a whole thing mm -hmm. but you know even there again i've had those thoughts of I'm I'm afraid of people seeing me laugh or seeing me maybe like I don't know have a giggle or mm, do you know because yeah, yeah yeah you'd be afraid like, to be judged on it like because that's the thing and yeah. that's, that's the thing about vulnerable spaces you see is that going into these places you have to be like there's times I'd be doing this podcast and I'm like I shouldn't be doing this at all still like even though yeah. I've started it it's my own thing and I and like my wife no she she needs to like she sent me a message the other day I had to go for a walk my like I was just, I just felt taught. I get this thing called imposter syndrome. That I, and that's what I, I'm going through that at the moment as well. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It's very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. It is. And it, it's not, it's not easy. Like, and I still get it. And I, I, yeah. I could still get it for the rest of my life. I don't know, but I kind of, I try to focus on the 24 hours and I, I do yeah. get it. I'm not, mm -hmm. I don't have it today. I feel very good today. And thankfully, yeah. and, 
but I had it the other day and she just sent a big long message like you know, and it was fucking fantastic to receive it yeah. and it, it literally just opened my eyes I was like Jeez, Jamie yeah relax by it you know <laughs> and exactly and and luckily enough I, I I wouldn't say I have I, I, I have mental health struggles. I won't say yeah. I have mental health issues, like, you know, because yes. I feel yeah. it's, it's a bigger thing. And uh, I've, I definitely have had in my life, without yeah. a doubt, the stuff I put myself through and the stuff I've been through, you know, um, that I've definitely put, I, 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 so I do, I do struggle with it um, every now yeah. and again. But it's just, I, like, for me, it's just about pushing myself. And, definitely. And, 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 but that's for me. I can't tell someone with a mental health issue well, just push yeah. yourself, you'll be fine, you know? Yeah, Yeah, Keep, exactly. You know? Because there's an issue there, you know what I mean? And yeah, whole, like for me, word. even yesterday, I, um, we were, my boyfriend was working up in Galway, so I, I had an opportunity to go up in the car and just kind of, you know, sit on a bench by the beach or whatever. Mm. Um, and for me, that was a massive thing to do, mm-hmm. whereas somebody else would be like, oh, I, let's just go, like, yeah. I was so proud of myself for just like going up there mm-hmm. um, and just being in a different space. I was just and it's like, it. yeah, unfamiliar. like these unfamiliar, these small things that like I think people take for granted so much yeah. that I'm oh. I'm really thankful for these days. Like just even when I get a, a tiny just glimpse of of something different, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just yeah. shows that you're never you're you're not going to be in this frame of mind or in this in this struggle for forever you know yeah even, even though even, even if you are forever it's just going to get way easier you know and th- and that's the thing and yeah I suppose that's why I'm so you know I'm so desperate to get the treatment now you know because yeah. I'm like what month is it July um and I, I really did think I would be there by now mm. you know kind of on the path but yeah I know it has brought me down another path of you know, meeting a lot of other other people, you know, mm-hmm. having good conversations. And so yeah. there there is there is that good part, but it's also very hard when you're when you're trying to go through the whole process. Of course, yeah. of course. Yeah. You can see the yeah. kind of the destination is down along, but it's exactly. the journey to get there is people yeah. say that it's people say that in 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 a positive light, you know, you know, don't be, don't be yeah. rushing too far to get here. But it, when it's it's a different story when it, when it's not so positive in in a way. Exactly, you know? mm. exactly. Because the, the last uh, thing you yeah. want is the is is a negative journey anywhere, you know that kind of way. Yeah, and this is the thing, mm. and it's you know that constant questioning: Am I doing the right thing? You know, yeah. um, I'm 25, so you know I feel like I should be like I want to be out there traveling I want to be out there doing all these all these things so every day that goes by I'm not getting the help I'm like I feel like okay I'm another step behind I'm another step behind you yeah. know people I see on Instagram out traveling and yeah it's 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 definitely a hard place to be you know mm-hmm. yeah a hundred percent yeah and social media can be good and bad you know what I mean? like I, definitely luckily for me i was able to see someone shared your story on social media so then i got in contact with you through yeah. social media and then mm-hmm. we i sent you a link through zoom you know that kind of way. yeah so, that's the great thing about social media you know yeah. so there is benefits and there is positives and and to be fair like not to be fair but like to look at your journey from where you were hospitalized for six months you know that's yeah like that like that's that's incredible for any I fell off a truck years ago. I have a scar on my head. Yeah. There. And uh, yeah. I was, I, I think I'd say I might, might, might have been there for two weeks, I'd say. If, yeah. If, and it was like, Jesus Christ, I thought I was going to go mad. I was at a young flare. Yeah. So I can't imagine I don't being know. in hospital for six months. I honestly, I, I don't know how I got through that. I think mm. I was so sick that a lot of it was a blur. You know mm. what I mean? I was so medically sick that a lot of it was just keeping me okay. And... Yeah. The rest of it was kind of preparing me to go home, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, can, when I look, hmm. yeah, yeah. But you can, yeah. De- you can, you can definitely. Uh, that's what I was going to say. You're going to say, look back there, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say mm. when I look back on it, you know, I, I'm thankful that you know it, it literally saved my life. But I also wish that that was it, you know. Like I, I didn't looking. Looking back and looking forward, I didn't think my life would end up where I am now. Mm-hmm. But I am. Um, I suppose the other thing is like just me. I'm surrounded by 
like really good people who keep reminding me that this is a path I'm on you know Mm -hmm. it's a journey I'm on um and it's not just that my life is a massive failure and things are going to keep getting bad you know and Uh, from a chat like yeah like I woke up this morning just like really sad to be honest about how my life is Mm -hmm. um but but just having those people around me that are like it's going to get better you know you can do this Mm -hmm. I'm on a different path now than I ever was you know I'm actually after gaining so many new relationships because Mm -hmm. I'm being open and I'm not being a kind of masked version of myself you know yeah 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 Yeah. and that's great that's that's what it's all about that's like and there will be good and bad come with everything but there is definitely it's all about there was someone said to me before it's like feeding two wolves you know what i mean yeah and it's like Mm -hmm. like if there's if there's a fight happening between a negative thought and a positive thought it's the one that you're the one that you feed the most is with your attention is the one that's going to thrive you know and it's easier said than done no don't get me wrong and it's that's a very kind of broad uh description but yeah like and like to look back it's to, to be in hospital for six months and to be here no talking about your what of what's going on with you to be opening up yeah. to, to be to be helping other people to be you're yeah. inspiring to me and let's be honest because I, oh, thank I, you no i mean that from the bottom of my heart oh. and i if i see people like you do what you do then i i have great hope for other people do you know what i mean because like yeah it's if if the system fails us the system is a thing that was put in by colleges and fucking and people and ma- it's man-made yes. systems you know what i mean yes. yes the research that they do is very good don't get me wrong but yeah the way it's set up is done man-made and man can be fairly stupid sometimes you know what i yeah. mean and yeah. so if it's bringing people like you out from the system and into a space of say social media or podcast yeah. or whatever that where you can open up and people can li- listen to the words that you're saying through not true off a textbook and not true whatever but from the heart yeah and they exactly. can connect with that um that yeah. there's, there's more power in that i feel than most treatments you know what i mean that, 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 um, definitely yeah so it's, it's definitely been an empowering an empowering thing to do even though i am really struggling it's also uh, given me a another journey of i suppose um that there's something else out there for me you know mm-hmm, i i've gotten to to a point where i i'm questioning how many more people have to have to sadly die because of the failures in the system you know and how how much more are we going to put up with this um like my case was in the doyle actually a couple oh, really? of of weeks ago oh, well. and um Who a really really forward? great or... yeah so uh, there's a lovely td um holly Carnes. Oh, she yes. does a lot of work for advocacy in in a lot of different communities um so she was great she brought up my case and she she said i i don't have the word incorrectly mm. but she said how long more is this going to go on what is going to change you know she asked the health minister and um you know, all the health minister said was, uh, I've been aware of the case and there are hospital beds mm-hmm. and there we're recruiting teams, you know, and I think we've been getting this answer for so Jeez, many years. Yeah. We're recruiting people, you know, recruiting, yeah. um, and it's it's not enough. Like we we need it now, you know. They wouldn't need and to be recruiting been... if they if they funded the situation, like funded the health service sector, you know, and exactly. then people that are, get masters and th- all these things in college can stay in Ireland and work the yeah. system here, so you know, instead of having exactly. to go to Australia and Canada and England and anywhere. And this is uh, the thing, and even yeah. knowing that you know she had known of my case for weeks, mm. but nothing has c- had come of it. Like, yeah, it it was painful, I think, to hear because you know during those weeks like days feel like weeks sometimes you know oh, so big time, even yeah, yeah. even knowing that was kind of um was such a, bit... a dismissive thing you know yeah yeah yeah. it's another way yeah. then you know yeah and i Definitely. mean that doesn't weigh it on your shoulders like as well but yeah yeah no and is who's holly Car- is she independent or who's she with you know? so um I could actually look it up for you, but I actually <laughs> yeah. I, well, okay. I've, forgotten, I've forgotten the the party that yeah. she's with now. Well, but, um, her, yeah. She's a great woman. Yeah, mm-hmm. she's great. She does a lot of advocacy work yeah. um, for you know disabled people and a lot of different communities. So she's she's one of the good ones. You know, yeah, she's a young yeah. 
a young woman and I think she's she's doing her best to to make some changes so I really respect that yeah yeah it does yeah. definitely does definitely does, there's definitely good in politics too, you know, even though as, as bad as it is right now, but I feel like we've been plagued with two parties for long exactly. enough, you know, and it's time for change. Yeah. And I feel that's, that'll come, it, it's it's coming, it's around the corner with Sinn Féin and stuff yeah. as well. And I hope, um, yeah, I hope it's just uh, the sooner the better, really. Do you know I mean? Definitely. And I know that you're living uh, in New York, right? Yeah. Um, I was just wondering how different the... I suppose the quality of care there is or mm. the opportunity to receive care is it yeah. is it quite different from Ireland or it's because of the amount of people obviously the healthcare like if you wanted good care you need you need a private system you know you need to go yeah. through the private system um if you're if you have the money the care is there for you like and it's there's yes. so much yeah. so much um there's so much to to go off like they they, they really kind of study every little thing to yes. um to a T like so it's amazing yeah it is fantastic um there's uh my wife she went through a thing there recently and she was being dismissed an awful lot um wow. before, it was before I met her and she yeah. was in and out of hospitals and they wouldn't tell her what was going on and they wouldn't even mm. or they were saying oh, whatever there was it was being dismissed as panic attacks or oh, you're just getting a panic yeah. attack you're fine mm-hmm. and it actually wasn't a lot it, it ended up being um like like um uh, like like in her blood she was she had problems in her blood that was that was affecting oh. how yeah so she had wow. um oh, but she had it was like an eating disorder it, it amounted to them because she couldn't eat and it was the salt anything that she had whether it had salt on it or sodium would affect her massively oh, she got very sick from it and but wow. they were, yeah so and that was so I, I, like it, unless you're spending big bucks really they, they, it's there for you but it's there so the good again thing about i Ireland, suppose yeah the good thing about Ireland is the population size is small enough. Yes. You have the medical cards and you have these things, yep. but it should it should be it should be better because it, it, with just five million people and the money that that country makes is ridiculous, you know. So it's crazy. Yeah. So like. Yeah. It's just I was it, recently, it is totally different over here. Like. Definitely. Yeah. I I was listening to um, a study done recently um, by a I think he's a neuroscientist in America, and. It was so interesting because he was talking about, you know, how psychiatrists are one of the only doctors in their fields that don't look at the the part of the body that they're studying, Mm -hmm. you know, so he's actually looking at the brain and his patients, the patients that come to him. We're literally only watching a podcast on that the other night. Oh, it was probably (laughs) the same thing. Yeah. 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 So he he scans their brains and. Mm he sees the parts that are lighting up and and all of probably a lot of other technical stuff and yeah. <laughs> then he can prescribe medication that actually helps them you know specifically rather for than one part of the brain yeah rather than mm. going through like i've been 10 years in the public mental health system just going through trials of medication and um i just think that research is amazing because they're actually studying the part of the body that needs help and psychiatrists they're not doing that like it's so simple when you think of it like Mm. a doctor is supposed to examine the part of the body why aren't we examining the brain you know and all the equipment is there for it like you know yeah 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 yeah. it is it was that's very funny that you brought that up now because it was actually my wife showed me that yeah um she had seen it previously but like that no i think it, was, it would cost a few grand for the scan or whatever that's the but, thing yeah but look if if you have it like it's fucking great you know what i mean and exactly it was, and then of course in time if that but if that was funded you see like if that was yeah. in ireland no say and then you fund yeah. that then you then people can get it for free you know get one a year one, one every five years you can get one scan yeah. and it, you can work on it then with, with the proper medication for exactly um you know so it's uh what, what's happening oh yeah that's right but um so and that, that could be funded and it could be it could be given out grand and easy like in, in ireland but definitely it's it's don't that's down like i'm I, i'm a Sinn Féin member like so i don't want to be like blowing smoke up their ass yeah. on this podcast all the time but yeah you, you have to call it for what it is like the government are making a fucking hymns of what's going on at the moment oh so definitely. like it, it change needs to happen and fast and with, yeah people doing the work that you're doing and mm-hmm. a lot and a lot of others as well that do it it's um it's great to see it happening and it's great to like yeah. it, it will make it 
for the new government coming in as well because they've never been in government before, you know. And so they, that's the thing. They, they, yeah. they're, they're, they're obviously they're all human as well, so it's not going to be perfect. Yeah. They're not going to just come in and fucking dust off everything. No. It's going to be perfect. No. So it need we need voices out there. We need that's Definitely. why I, that's why I started this podcast too, you know, to show that. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, it's just it's like I wanted to tell my story because um, I, I've I've gone to mediums and I've gone to all this and yeah. I, even before my mum died, she was at a medium, and you said uh, the medium said to her that in years to come, your son is going to be very, is going to work with a charity and he's going to be very wow. um, yeah he's going to be well known and all this. No, wow, some of that is airy fairy as well. Yeah, so, but I I kind of I do get a bit from it. And I went to one and they were, they were saying, you you're, you have to keep doing what you're doing or whatever. And, and Definitely. Your, your story will help others. And I think that's exactly what's after happening with you. And I hope if, if it can even help one person. But, you know, yeah. I would love to, I would give anything to just be able to, to just sit down with the health minister or the Taoiseach and just have an open, kind respectful conversation yeah. on what needs to be done you know mm. and how people are struggling um because there's there's just so much of you know handshaking and friendly pictures outside yeah. of hotels and new openings of stuff and mm-hmm. i i we need to tackle like problems that we're having in in there's a lot of problems you know but mm-hmm. for me going through this um yeah, I would love to. And I, I think as citizens, we should be able to have that opportunity to sit down with our, our leaders and kind of, you know, have a an open discussion and a candid one. I would agree 110 percent. But I honestly feel that they're so far removed that they, they have an answer already. Before they, they oh, just, for sure. You know, and they're yeah. like, oh, yes, yes, we'll be looking into that. And yes, yes, we'll, we'll have a look at that. And yeah, we'll bring that up in here. We'll bring that up in the channel. We'll bring that up in the doll. Yeah. yeah um, but no, but you're right. And it's like it should like if you could have something like that on a live broadcast or something. Yeah. You know, and just for other people to hear the questions being asked as well. And it would exactly uh, even I think that would be even just a step to even ask the questions because yeah. you know, Holly brought that up in the doyle. Um, and again, as you said, the the same answer is oh, we're looking into it, you know. Mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. but but just to even even keep bringing that up, you know. Yeah. You have to just. Hundred uh, percent. I've learned through this. Yeah, just have to just shout and scream for what you need because you're not going to get listened to. Yeah, it's a it's a hard, it's a very hard thing because like even my sister said to me before, she was like, Jimmy, is if if someone has cam- cancer, they go for, they go for radio or radio treatment. Yeah. If, if, you know, if you break your leg, you're in a cast. If you fucking, you know, if you have stomach ulcers, you have to go for an operation. You take something. And exactly. When you have mental health, there's no you can't put something on it. You know what I mean? No. No, there no. was um a, sto- a story I think it was yesterday. There was a, a young young boy, I think he was on the spectrum and um having really bad problems with his mental health. And his mom had to bring him to A and E and there was there was nothing they could do for him. Cams weren't there, you know, there was no one to contact. They just said for him to go home and adjust his medication. And yeah. I mean, like th- this is the next generation coming up, yeah. you know, like we need to help the most vulnerable people 100%. and give them support and I think it's just to be brushed over like that on such a young a young person and because I've been in that situation myself I suppose I I like I really feel the pain for them you know <laughs> um and for every person that that has to be turned away or just given a new medication and then go home you know yeah, yeah um yeah. so so I really yeah I, I, I really hope that can change. Yeah, definitely. And especially when it's so close to your heart as well, that, that you'd feel yeah. the empathy for it, like, you know, and sympathy for them. And it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a huge thing that needs to, that needs to be tackled. Like I've said, like I've yeah. seen, I've seen so many deaths because of it, you know, and it's, uh, yeah. and, and it doesn't have to be straight suicide. You know what I mean? It can be someone no, that that's drink, the thing. You know, that drinks themselves to death or to get to, 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 they say that, Oh, it was an accidental overdose. He took the wrong drug at the house, but or don't know, and all this, yeah, you know, all this stuff shouldn't be going on. Don't know, no. it, like when you're no. when you're when you're when you're when you take substance abuse or, or or when you abuse substances or whatever, that it's a form yeah. of self destruct. You know, it's a, it's a definitely form of self self harm, and people are doing yeah. that just as much as to know. Like, luckily enough, there's voices like you out there that 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 can kind of guide people in a way. Like, hopefully, yeah. says you, like you're you're not. It's it's not the only reason or whatever, but. 
it's exactly. um or you're not the only way either you know it's not it's not it's not yeah a, yeah it's, it's not um what do i say i would I, it's not a chore for you you know you're just yeah opening no up no and, exactly but there's there's people out there that don't that don't have that like i hadn't no. my my support system growing up was so bad you know what i mean well and yeah. it was just down to people like the school failed me like really they, they knew what was going on they, they brought in this they used to have concerts once every two weeks that would come in for two a double class and there was really? a few of us yeah a few of us were going to there and that was it then you yeah. know um and schools and and doctors and you know, they should be all in in some way in codes yeah. do you know what i mean that that, that they can all so obviously there's gdp gdpr or whatever the data yeah. protection and all that they don't have to be going into the ins and outs of things but you know yeah. if with a parent's consent they, they could help you know with the teacher what's going on in school what's going on with the doctor yeah. what's going on you know and it's um it's just not you're just brushed from one situation or one institution to another you know and exactly um, yeah you know and I, I mean remember, I, I've been yeah. yeah sorry for interrupting no you're fine you're grand you're grand yeah um I remember like even just a couple of months ago I was up in the mental health the emergency department mm. with my mom and you know she was there with me and I was I was really in a really low place like just crying and begging them for help like just to take me just to give me a break you know mm-hmm. from from my surroundings from the compulsions I was having not being able to stop it and yeah. and just just being told you know well I think you should just go home take some medication and it's better off dealt with in the community and Jesus yeah Christ. I think if 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 these things were caught earlier like you said mm. in school and being able to communicate with each other like and I suppose as a as a man as well like I don't know your experience with it, but there's probably an awful lot of stigma. I was on a panel um, on Saturday around, you know, men aren't supposed to cry. Men, mm. you know, men can't be, von- they have to be macho. And, yeah. you know, I suppose that's another hard thing. I don't know if you've experienced that. Oh, but, 100%. Yeah. They, 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 an ego, a man's ego, I, well, I yeah. feel is worse than a woman's ego, but I'm not, I don't know because I'm not a woman, but yeah what I do know is that ego like so I remember you were describing when you were going into school and that you were you were kind of an extrovert that went into an introvert yes um and I was the kind of total I wouldn't say I was a total opposite but I transitioned into a bigger extrovert and that Mm. it was it was a way of of for people not to say how are you you know how how, how are you feeling Jamie if someone said that to me I would have fucking collapsed and it happened to me they couldn't get at you yeah, yeah, yeah. So the louder I was and the brasher I was and the fuck this and fuck that and fuck you and blah blah blah. Yeah. And I I was I was there was definitely times I bullied people but yeah. not wanting to. Do you know what I mean? But it was just I like, get you. by 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 what I said in the group of things, I would put others down in order to pull me out. To you know that yes. kind of way. It's it, I, yeah. I described it before. I, I nearly drowned in a river years ago and someone jumped in to help oh, me. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, it was a yeah. it was, I was in a safe enough environment, but when I jumped in, I okay. started to panic. And one oh, of the yeah, lads jumped yeah. in to help me. And when yeah. he did, I actually caught his head and I pushed him down because I was panicking so much. <gasps> oh my gosh. And I, I, no, it was grand after we were all laughing about yeah. it. Thanks for the God. But, but I, yeah. I, not, I, I never forget it because I, I use it a lot that in when I was growing up, it was like I was constantly drowning mm. and I needed to push others down in order to push me yes. up. You know, and wow. it, 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 it was, it, it was, it had nothing got to do with the person. It was what was going on in my environment. Do you know what I mean? I was drowning like in yeah. my own emotions, in my own in my own head, in my own, I didn't wow. know what to do I, in my addictions, yeah. in my, you know, everything like sex, drugs, fucking drink. Like it was yeah. all, I needed all of it or, or I was fucked. You know, so I was like, just exactly. doing everything and yeah. at a very young age and God, I don't wow. know, like, and that's when I was saying to you, like that, that you, you, you went from being in the hospital for six months and whatever, yeah. but now you can look back in that with a bit of, I know you'd wish you were somewhere else today, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. And which and that you can use that as a, as a as a positive as well because there's always room for improvement. So no, no matter what. There's always yeah. And, and I can, I got out of that, you know. Exactly, and and yeah. for me, I I use my past as as a as a way of going. I could be I could be back there, but I'm not. You know, I have exactly. I have a, I have a little bit of peace in my mind, um, yeah. which I'm grateful for. Um, I'm a lot better than what I was before. I'm opened up mm-hmm. to people. I, I get a I get a kick out of doing what I do now, just on yeah. doing this, just like talking to people like you, yeah. And and it's just it it like in to, in to, for me now. This is I'm a different like obviously I have a different journey. We've had two different lives, but it's yeah. all similar enough in 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 the external influence kind of definitely situation. Um, so in time it does get easier. 
from that point of view. And um, so like, that's the only bit of advice or a bit of hope I can kind of give you, you know, is just like that. We're not there anymore, thankfully, but there's still yes. a lot of work to be done. So not that kind and of that's way. the thing, you know, and I suppose it's from being, you know, in hospital for that long and going through what I, I went through with that. Um, I kind of know what I need. You look yeah. like I know the treatment I need, mm-hmm. but also I know I was kind of, you know, I was thinking the other day, like I'm so disappointed in myself that I went to hospital, I got treatment and now I'm, I'm looking to go to hospital again. But Jesus, no, in know, a way thinking, off. no, because like it's it's a different thing. And I I've I literally survived anorexia, you know, like it's such a deadly thing. Yeah. And I it just gives me that that I can do it again. I just need the right help you know yeah. because that's what I've been lacking is the right help and yeah. I think for so many other people they just need the a specific treatment the right help and and to be supported and yeah 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 definitely and and that's unfortunately you have to go through an ex- extreme experience in order to just learn mm. that bit of information you know and sometimes yeah. it's, it's like it doesn't weigh up but it does yeah. in, in, in it, like it that's a that's kind of a negative light on it in a way like obviously look nobody wants to go through things but we yeah. all we everybody has a cross and and, and I used I used to I used, I used to always say I wish I was like the normal people or I wish I could have a couple of go to the pub and have just have one or two pints yeah. and at home and cook a dinner and yeah I, I, I there is no such thing as normal people like do you know what I mean there's n- we no are all individually very unique and very yeah. Yeah, we have our own journeys, our own our own past stories, or the way like parenting is huge in everybody's life. Yes. So yeah. It, it depends on how your parents brought you up. It depends on how what you went through, and you know. So, like, it's we're so we're so uniquely different. It's a beautiful thing in a way, but it's it, I I wish that we all knew that too in a way. You know that it's like yeah. There is no normal. Definitely. Like. There's there's literally no normal, and you can yeah. see someone walking down the street and oh, they look like they have everything together and, you know, yeah. a great life. And they might not have, you know. Yeah, or they might just feel like, good that day, you know. Yeah. And they're just radiating. Yeah. But then the following day, they might get out of bed for two days, like, you know. Exactly. It's often, like, the happiest people in the world mm, yeah. or that you know that have the most problems, yeah, you know, because yeah, yeah. it's that's just it uh, yeah. trying to mask it, yeah. Mm, yeah, exactly. And it's how good you are at masking it sometimes. But instead of masking it... Is. it it's about opening up about it, you know, and that's that's the real help. definitely, and that's what definitely. you're doing, Emma girl, you know, and that's yeah, and that's a and that's the that's that's amazing. So it is really, it is, yeah, and it's inspiring, you. girl. And you you are gonna get what you need, and you are gonna yes. by getting that you're gonna open up doors for other people as well, you know. And yeah, I feel in a way that I I went through what I went through in my life was it was like a it was like a sacrifice to help other people, you know. And if I can yes, if I can help others, it it kind of it kind of heals some of my heart. And, and that's it. yeah, I feel like it it is definitely like empowering and it, it, it a, a little bit healing for me doing this. And I hope I can continue to do this and maybe on you know different platforms and mm-hmm. just just to it's it's not just helping me, I hope it can help other people. Um and it gets that kind of, you know, because I get really frustrated at how slow things are moving for me. Mm-hmm. Um but but by doing things like this, like coming on your podcast, it, it gives me like a goal, yeah. you know, like I'm not just lying in bed, like waiting for another um, donation to come through or uh, how much more do I need now until I can go, you know, yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. I'm doing something proactive and mm-hmm. talking to like minded people and yeah. and getting inspired by other people, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's huge. Like my dad used to say, I watch kettle never boils, you know, so if you're yeah. just you're better off to be active some somewhat as as much as the body can take and make Definitely. sure you're getting the proactive rest as well and to know yeah and it's balance the key to life is balance and it's fucking the hardest thing in the world to maintain you know so hard you know? yes yeah, so so hard yeah because even you know doing these things my mom will often say to me like um you need to look after yourself first as well you know <laughs> like don't you know don't get burnt out from yeah. from doing too much and then yeah. you're suffering you know so yeah, i think it's yeah. that that balance of of helping but also like really listening to your own body as well and like yeah. when you need to take a rest 
absolutely yeah. yeah yeah and uh but even today i was like and i do it for every guest that comes on i'm like if they cancel yeah. the last minute i'm just going to start my own thing you know so yeah, and yeah. It's, it's just and it's, sure. and it's it's just kind of i set myself up for the worst experience but then i exactly. end up having a better, kind of better one you know yeah but, um, yeah definitely uh, so but it's um but yeah no it's um it's it's a big subject and i thank you very much for coming and talking about it um well, thank you I for having to, me it's an hour and 15 so i'll probably cut it oh here sure but um, yeah, thank you so much, Emma, and everything. I'm gonna put the GoFundMe link in the description of all these. It's on so it's gonna be on Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and yeah. So and it'll be on oh, Buzz. Amazing. Then. Yeah. So hopefully I'll I'll it'll help some somewhat. And, thank you um, so much. Keep reaching out, Carla. Keep looking after yourself. Definitely. Um, really right. enjoyed the conversation as well. Yeah, me great. too. I'll just stop the recording here now. Do. Good for listening. That's it. Uh, if you liked that episode, please like it, share it, recommend it to a friend, subscribe to my channel. Um, yeah, we leave it there. Smile, lads.